Hello and welcome friends. Today I'm going to show you how to do a sky near sunset. So first I'm going to sketch out the uh, design, not design, the photo I took. So this is like a leading line of a fence. It goes into the distance. And we got some trees. And then we have this and then some more trees. And a big open field. And then the sky, we got a cloud right here. And then this is not exact to the photo, but this is like inspired by the photo. So I'm doing some leading lines going into it like that and clouds. Okay, I think that's all I'm really going to do. And I am using my new Van Gogh, um, I am using my new Van Gogh pocket box for my paints. Take this guy out actually, there we go. Okay. So this brush I'm using is a Princeton Round Neptune. And first I am going to start with uh, yellow ochre. Let's put over here. So this is going to be like the dried up grass. Rinse my brush in my dirty water. And then I'm going to take some olive green. I have to remember all the names of these paints now. Get more. Actually, what I should have done first was spritz my paint. That way they're nice and ready. Hydrate that paint. There we go. Okay. Yellow ochre. I like to have a lot of paint on my brush and in the well before I start painting. That way I don't have to stop and mix more paint. Okay. Let's just get this on. So this is like end of summer, which is like now because it's mid-September right now. And I was driving home from some family's place up in Washington. And I noticed that along the side of the road was a really pretty sunset going on. Let's add some more of an olive green. And I really liked it. So I pulled over and took just like a quick little snap uh, photo through my windshield. Because I'm like, that's pretty. Let's just take a moment, stop, take a picture. So, um, just playing around with this new paint. So I just got water on my brush right now. Seeing if I can like get some blooms, flows. Yeah, this paint is pretty new to me. This is the first painting I've done of it. These are the color swatches I did. Um, okay, and then that's, what's this one? Uh, I think this is Davy's gray. Drop it in along the horizon line, see if it will like bloom out. Push the paint around. Okay. In this little sketchbook, it doesn't have like the best quality of paper, so like I might fight the paint a little bit, but I mean, it is what it is. And then next, like the next lightest color I see in the photo is like the sky, like the blue. So I'm actually gonna take some of this lavender. And then I'm going to grab some of, it would probably be 
in this blue here, which is very dark. So beauty about watercolors is you don't need white paint. You just add more water and that makes colors lighter. Because these clouds in this photo are quite grayish. It's more water. All right, and then get towards the sunset color. This is gamboge. Take some of this. And then rinse my brush. And I'm going to grab some of the quinacridone rose. Just a little bit because this is going to be a really strong color. Oh, that's pretty. That is pretty. And that's going to be along here. should probably wait for my um, ground there to dry a little bit more. But I'm just going to go for it. I think I'm going to add some tiny trees once both layers dry. And just let these colors kind of blend together on the right up here. So I think one of the easiest things that you could probably paint, just beginning to paint with watercolors, is skies. Because you can use all kinds of techniques in a sky. Um, you can utilize a lot of different things. It's not just wet on wet or wet on dry. So I'm going to wipe off my brush. So there's like no extra water and grab some of this paint because I want it a little more vibrant. So the, if you want paint more vibrant, the color, you just have less water. So I'm just kind of just dropping it on to this area that is already still pretty damp and just kind of blooms and spreads out. So I'm not really like wiping it on with my brush and just dabbing it that way I'm not like lifting any paint that's under it all right so it's kind of more orange a little more rose And if I don't touch the ground area that's wet, the colors won't bleed together because watercolor doesn't go rogue like that. It just hangs out with where the water's at. That's my brush. So I'm kind of like soften with a wet brush, just clean water, soften the lines. Okay, I really like all this crazy blooms and cauliflowering. So it kind of looks like cauliflower. So call it cauliflowering. Um, I kind of like how that's looking. Let's get some more gamboge. So this pocket box from Van Gogh is the muted color set. Um, and I like doing landscapes and animals and stuff. So I figured that would probably be a good choice for me. So I'm just kind of dropping in the paint gently, trying not to disturb too much that's underneath. Give some more color. It's so pretty. I really like these colors actually for this sunset. I might take these like plein air painting and stuff. I've always just bought like my own tubes of paint, not like a pre-made palette box like this. Where the choice is already made up, like what colors you have. So this isn't really like the photo anymore. <laughs> I'm just kind of going off and having fun 
with the colors. Get some just clean water and I'm just gonna um, brush along this line of watercolor to kind of bring the paint up into the sky more and that will soften everything. And I did um, tape down with washi tape the edges and I use my little clips to help keep the paper like as flat as possible while this is really wet and as it dries. All right, this is looking really cool. So this is looking really cool. Next, I'm gonna do like some of my darker clouds. So these clouds are kind of like a dark blue, purpley color. So some clean water, get my lavender. And I'm gonna just put it in a new area. I mean, I could put it where the lavender and the um, dark blue there are. But I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna try there's um, a neutral tint, this one here. Yeah, and see how that looks. And now I'm gonna go up here. So this is kind of like the under of the clouds. So I'm just kind of going along with my lines I drew down to kind of give it like some direction. It's gonna lead your eye into the painting for the composition. Mm, grab a little bit of this too, why not? Sometimes it's really cool to just like do two different colors at once and just kind of blend them on the paper and see how they react to each other. Um, watercolor is really just about playing around and having fun and seeing how it goes more or less like i really like this part right here that's really pretty so i'm just gonna leave that alone and kind of do this lavender neutral tint mix around it so that it adds like the uh, if you could call it oh my gosh i forget the name um negative painting so you paint the background dark and so you leave the, the foreground like light so trying to make it look like clouds and stuff okay this is like this morning right now it's like so nice it's nice and cool i really miss like the autumn days I am a fall girl through and through. So this September morning, it's quite cool out. And I'm ready to like make like a, a chai and have a nice warm drink and beautiful sunset. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Oh, you see a bunch of water just bloop. We'll see what happens there. I mean, this painting... I don't really see it as like super precious. Let's soften this line here. So just have just wet water on my brush. Wet water, ah, clean water. There we go. See that line gets really soft. Oh yeah, this is looking really cool. Um, so I want to get that line soft too, but I don't want to have a ton of water on my brush. So just kind of laying my brush on its side and just going along, softening that line. This might've got a little too dry. I'll just kind of like tease it a little bit with the very end of my brush. There we go. And add a little bit more dark to it. And the beautiful thing about watercolors is that you can do more than one layer. So if you want something darker, you just let that layer dry and then go back in. Let's my brush out. And then using like the back of my finger here to see how damp it is. And I can also like look to the side to see how much sheen of water. Let's see, 
that I can show you. You can see the sky there is really damp. So the, the, the ground is almost dry. So I will just be um, adding in the trees. I'm going to mix the, the color first. So checking out my little color swatches here. This is super handy to have. Um, I'm going to do probably, gosh, what shall I do? So that color, that color, that color. And then I went to Davies Gray and Olive. Probably do Davies Gray, this one right here. Get some water. Because the trees are quite back there behind the field. So I want to have them like back and then, you know, I want to see what Gamboge and Davies Gray look together. Mm, too yellow for my liking. Take some of this, plop it in. Yeah, we're getting close to what I was thinking of. And sometimes a lot of things in the distance look more blue because of the um, atmospheric um, perspective. If that's the word. Okay, let's add some trees to this skyline here. So I'm just playing around. This brush comes to a really nice point. So it can hold a lot of water and have a really good point to it, which means I can do like some more detailed things like the tops of the trees. Um, I'm not going to add any extra water to my brush because I want this layer relatively like dark. So the tree line is a really great way to bring the sky and the foreground together along the horizon line. You can kind of see that the paint would rather sit along the bottom here because the paper is like buckled and warped. It's like losing the color up top. So I'll have to do like another layer of this, which is not the end of the world. I really like this base layer of the pink and like the yellows. So I am not going to touch that. So I'm not worried about like painting over the tree line or anything. So now the field over here, the trees are taller because the field kind of goes way back that way and it comes closer over here. So I'm going to let that dry. In the meantime, I'm going to work on the fence posts. Yeah, that's pretty dry. So I have a sepia here. And I'm just going to plop it in this little well here. All right. And then the fence posts. So the fence posts for perspective, the closest ones will be larger to you and like further apart. And as they go further back, they'll get smaller and look closer together. Um, and you know, they could also not be like put in evenly. Add some brown back here too. A little more dimension. 
interests. And I'm going to do another layer of dark along this as well. Rinse my brush. Some clean water. Lighten this color up. Add a little bit of blue. Gray it down a little bit. And then I'm going to do like the, the wire. And I think it looks really cool when the brown of the fence line like comes in with the wire. So kind of like blends and flows. So I'm just touching my paint loaded brush where I got the paper damp with the water. Okay, so it kind of will lead you in to the painting and into the corner, the crease. <laughs> kind of bring everything to this point here. Um, since this is dry, I can do the dark cloud that's right there. Because I didn't want this to bleed into all the pretty pinks and yellows that I had painted. And then I'm going to soften the top. I want a wet, clean brush, but not like soaking wet. So like a slightly damp brush, really. I'm just like bringing it along the top and that will soften the top there. And then I'll probably do a little bit to the bottom. Just kind of push and pull the paint around a little bit until uh, I like how it looks. Do a little bit of this dark blue underneath. Oh, I had a lot on my brush. Look at that. Right there. Kind of push it around. And then I'm going to drop in some more color. pushing the paint around with a wet, clean brush. Try not too hard to disturb the under layers. The less you push the paint around, the less you disturb the layers underneath. Generally speaking, it takes a lot of practice. Um, but the more you do it, the better it looks and the better you feel about it. Soften some edges. That was a wet, clean brush. I'm just pulling it along where I kind of want the paint to lift. And I'm wiping off excess paint on my brush so I don't move other places. Because I'm like, that's too dark there. There we go. And I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. And then I'll work on the... Um, the tree line the first I want this to blend a little bit more just softly getting the edges damp to kind of fade out the pigment a little bit more okay time to let this dry and then do that